This chapter is all about putting multiple 3D objects into the same layer. It's called merging layers. You want to do that because you want to have them all interact with each other. You might want to have one object shadow falling on the other object, or you might want to have one light affecting all the objects equally. So for this first lesson, we're going to put objects into a stage or a set. So to follow along, go to Working Files, let's go to Photoshop Projects, and go on down to Stages. This project has two stages or two sets, and I downloaded them from Adobe. You can get those guys by going to 3D, Get More Content, going to this page that we've seen a couple times before, scrolling down here to the Stages and Sets. Click on that, you've got a Stages Set 1, Stages Set 2. I'll show you those guys in just a second here. Let's close this down. I've loaded them up in Bridge. These are the Stages in Set 1, and they are, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same. The lighting is only slightly different from one to the next, so really, one is sufficient. What you have here is a flat surface that you can put objects on, and then this scene rolls up on the back, and the shadows can fall up that edge there and curl up the back. Let's take a look at the other set. These are a little bit more interesting. Basically, you've got these cubes in which you can put objects, and they have lights inside these cubes and these colors and nice little soft edges here. All of these sets were made inside Cinema 4D, which is a pretty high-level 3D object creation tool. Let's go back to Photoshop. We're going to work on this one first. They call it Cyclorama. I want to put a wine bottle inside there. So let's make a new layer. Go down here, click that. And we're going to make a new mesh from a preset. Go on down here and make a wine bottle. Now it looks for all intents and purposes as if it's in the Cyclorama, but it's not. It's a separate layer. We're just seeing the other layer below us here. Let's just merge them together. Well, the way you merge things together is by having one layer selected, and then any other layer that's below it that's turned on will be merged with whatever you've got on top. So I've got the Cornell box, this other one with the square on it, turned off, so it won't merge here. To do this, you just go up to the panel menu here, click that, and down here it says Merge Down. You can also go to the Layer menu, and go over here and go Merge Down that way. But it's so much easier to work over here, so I'll go to this one here and Merge Down. Now it rarely goes perfectly. Strange things happen because of the basic sizes of the two layers. So obviously the wine bottle is much bigger relative to what we're seeing here in the layer below it. But we're going to deal with that in just a moment. There are now two meshes inside this layer, which is called Cyclorama. It takes the name of the bottom layer when you do this. We want to reduce the size of the wine bottle and push it back a bit. So I'm going to select that layer. It's called Layer 1. We could have changed the name of the wine bottle by double-clicking on it, typing in bottle, something like that. Now I want to select that and push it back. I can take a top view here, go over here and select the top view there, swap it. I can just push it back up against the wall here. Got my drag tool there and just kind of shove it back there. If you can push it right through the wall at some point, just bring it out a little bit in front of the wall there. Let's swap our views back again. It looks like it's kind of being cut off at the bottom. That's because it's not really on the ground plane. The ground plane is just below this 3D object. So let's put this guy on the ground plane by making it active, which it is and going to 3D, Snap Object to Ground Plane. That'll put it right on the ground plane, which is just slightly below here. So that's really okay where it is now. Notice the shadow falling here. It's a pretty big shadow because the light is pretty close. Let's take a look at that light. Swap views again. It's right there. We can change that view a little bit by clicking on the light. We've got the drag tool selected so we can move it around a bit. It's a point light there. They call it just light, but it's actually a point light. Get a little closer so the shadow doesn't go too far there. Something like that. Let's go back to our scene now by swapping back. I think I want to make the bottle a little bit smaller. So I'm going to click on the bottle, make it active, and scale it down by hovering right there where it says scale uniformly right there and bring it down by pulling it toward me. When you do this, then it scales in the middle as opposed to the bottom. So I need to drop it back down to the ground plane again. So 3D, snap object to ground plane, and there you have it. What I want to do now is give this some transparency and some color so you can see what happens when you've got a custom created ground plane. I'm going to select the label material here. Let's knock its opacity down to about 50%. Give it a little color under the diffuse here. Make it purple or whatever color you choose. And there you have it. We've got the light throwing a shadow there. Let's render this. I'm going to take the marquee selection and select that area there and render that. It's going to look really noisy if the first four passes and the fifth one will start cleaning it up. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll do Control or Command D to deselect that. You can see how the color shows up there in that shadow, and also how it bends here, how it gets larger as it goes around that bend. All right, let's turn that one off and go down to the next one. Scroll on down here a bit, turn on this Cornell box, as it's called. It's a cube missing the front. It has five sides. 
I want to put a sphere inside it, so I select this layer to make sure it's active, and I'm going to make a new layer, and I'll put a layer right above it. Let's make a sphere there, so we'll change this to sphere. Click Create. And of course, it's going to look like it's inside the box, but it's not. It's on a separate layer. I want to merge the two together again, so I have this one selected. This one's active. Let's change this one to sphere to kind of avoid any confusion down the road, so I'll double-click there and type in sphere. And now we'll merge the two by going to the panel menu, going down to merge down. And now they're merged together, and oh my goodness, what just happened here? The lights are out! Well, the lights are out because the sphere is so large relative to that box that it's obliterated the light. So we need to select the sphere here, right there, and we need to make it a little bit smaller. So I go over here to the Scale Uniformly guy there, and right there, and I'm going to pull it toward me, and eventually we're going to see the light. And there it is. Okay. That works out pretty well. Let's bring this little sphere down to the floor. I've got it selected here. Go to 3D, drop it down to the floor there, snap it to the ground plane. All right. You can move it around a bit like that. Let's take a look at the light there. Move that left and right, like so. Bring it up or down. Now, we could say we're done here, but we need to do a couple of things to kind of clean things up. There are actually two shadows being thrown here, one on the ground plane and one on the custom floor. So let's take care of that by removing the one on the ground plane. So I'm going to Environment here. I'm going to turn off the shadow for the ground plane by taking its opacity down to zero. Get this little fringe showing up here, but that'll clear up when we render this. Let's go back to this light here and take a look at it. I want the shadow to be a little bit softer than it is right now. It's kind of hard edge there, so I'll take it to maybe 25, 30%, something like that. All right, now that's been taken care of. I think the sphere can be a little bit larger, so I'm going to click on the sphere this way. Let's make it a little bit larger. We'll scale it up like that. That's going to push it down through the ground plane again. So we need to reset that by going back to 3D, snapping at the ground plane. All right, let's just render this area here and see what that looks like. We're not going to be done here yet, but I want to see what that looks like here in our little preliminary step here. So I'm going to take the marquee selection and select that area there, and we'll do a render here. And I'll do a little fast forward here just to show you how it looks after a few passes. All right, we'll stop it there. Now I want to do one more thing, and that's make the sphere reflective. So I'm going to go over here, click on the sphere once with my selection tool, and one more time to get the material. Let's make it more reflective by moving that up to 50% or so right around there. And nothing will happen because we need to render it. So let's render it again and see what happens. I think you'll find this to be pretty neat. Go down to there, and now we'll render it and see what goes on here. How about that? Very cool. This is one reason why you want to put objects in one layer so that they can respond to each other, so that they can show their environment, be part of the scene. I'll fast forward here just a bit. So there you go. That's how you add 3D objects to these prefabricated sets.